All right, welcome to the um, <clears throat> May, June 5th meeting of the Bristol Planning Commission, and we are here to continue the public hearing um, on the Stony Hill Properties application. And I'm not sure where we left off, except for that we had a, we did have a, a list of things that we were going to, but I, I'm not sure yeah. where that list is. Is it in the minutes? I, I, I need to know. I actually did not have time to read the minutes. Um, so I guess it would be best if we could address <coughs> those issues. Okay. And then we could continue with questions. Okay. Again, I'm Alan with Green Mountain Engineering, Kevin Harper is here representing some of the properties. Um, the few items that we had to address were lighting, landscaping, and the design concept for the uh, eight unit building. Um, so uh, very briefly, uh, in terms of uh, landscaping, we have added a, a planting schedule on the side, a uh, grand total of eight honey locusts, seven white oaks, and ten cedars. And the ten cedars have been placed on either side of the covered parking spaces to screen headlight and traffic, uh, screen the neighbors from headlight and traffic. Yeah. That's where the cedars are placed. The oaks and the honey locusts are mixed along uh, Firehouse Drive and into the project a little, a little ways. Um, but that's what we're proposing for landscaping at this time. <coughs> Lighting, we have shown uh, to be building mounted, uh, <coughs> dusk to dawn type uh, motion sensor lighting on the, uh, in three places on each building. Two in the front, so people coming into the building can see where they're, and one to light up those two parking spaces on either side that would be shielded if we tried to put something on a pole somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so those are building that light, lighted, and I think you have the cut sheets for those. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty straightforward. If um, Stony Hill Properties decides not to construct the covered parking, then they would be pole mounted, and that's why we submitted the pole mounted right. uh, cut sheet as well. Oh, okay, so it's an either or. It's either or. So it's kind of an optional thing unless Act 250 makes us do one or the other. Uh, we're not sure there yet. Um, so that's landscaping and lighting. Um, Can I ask about that? Yep. So if you don't have the covered parking, right, would the hedge go all the way through? Um, it, it could, I suppose, but there's a lot of buildings and already some existing trees right, in there. Right. So it's pretty thick. So it's pretty thick there, there yeah. already. Okay. And we're not planning to remove those trees. And um, so is it a pole yeah. structure with a roof? It is. It, it doesn't have a back a, side. The, the covered parking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sort so it of barn park. No, we would have a... Oh, yeah, it would be a full cover bus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So, and we can go back to that any time, but I wanted to show you the elevation views prepared by the Cushman <coughs> Design Group for the eight-unit building. Um, and you probably have some of these already, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So they're stepped back, as you can see, in the perspective view. Uh, we have a floor mm -hmm. layout, and like I mentioned, um, <clears throat> At the first meeting, I believe the end unit down, uh, the downstairs of each end unit are handicapped accessible uh, and not side by side as the rest of the floor. So oh, everything is on the first floor, the, the bedroom, bathroom, and the living area, whereas the other two units, the first floor, half of it is living, half of it is, is bedroom, bath, and this. Uh, on the on the second story, it's the living uh, the bathroom bedroom area. That's west. facing this is facing the road. west, facing the yes, road. Yes, right. 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 So there's all the front doors. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> this is the south perspective. So looking at it from the south, you're going to see these are the entrances from the, into the front row. So you're saying that the end units each have one handicap accessible unit. Correct. The end buildings. Or the each end 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 downstairs of each end building is so a handicap complete, complete unit. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yep. And then the 
uh, the cottages are all handicap accessible as well, and the first floor of the duplexes are handicap, the ADA accessible. So is that what the ABV stands for? Do you know the terminology? Above. ADA. <coughs> no, I don't know about that too. Oh, yeah, unit seven above. Oh, okay. Unit six, unit seven above. Yeah, exactly. That's what that is. Unit six and unit twelve that are in the yeah. um, Is the the numbering is funky on um, on this one? So it goes six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, twelve. I wonder if it's meant to be twelve, thirteen. Yeah. <coughs> well, the thirteen would be upper floor. Yeah, all right, so it's, this is one that's 12. unit that's that that looking at the first floor. This is all the first floor. So this is one the unit. Oh, and then sorry. seven would be the upper floor. This is yeah. one unit. With a, yeah. yeah. These are each single. Singles. Unit. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, right? Yeah, these are just, the, this unit is two stories, living on the bottom bedroom mm -hmm. upstairs. These are, all, everything's on the floor. These are and flats. Again, on the second These floor. are flats. I see. There's downstairs. I see. These are each up, have up. up and down. I see. Up I and see. Down. That helped me. That yeah. helped so the flats yeah. on the bottom flats are handicap accessible. Okay. See, they don't have that double wall. Right. Okay. I see. Okay. I got it. So I'm um, happy to answer any other questions you might have. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to flip through my own stack of plans here, not sure. Which order I put them in, but... Uh, That's okay. It helps to look at them big like this, too. <clears throat> So that's the wanna, duke, those yeah. are elevations of the duplexes. Which I think we saw last time. All right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we have elevations of the single family as well. That's what I was trying to find. That's the single family. Right. Two bedroom single family. So there's three of those. Three of those. Yeah, three, second. four, and five. Yep. And then two of the duplexes on the north. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was to not shield the view to East for the eight unit. Yeah. So that these two are sort of off to the left if you're looking to the east. <clears throat> and they'll be looking over the two bedroom units, essentially. And I think, Alan, the other question that was raised was around landscaping between the, correct, the buildings. So back to the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. there's not a lot of space for additional landscaping between the units because we do have parking off the road mm -hmm. between the units and a very limited amount of garden area available to the units. So we didn't, and, and of course we have the view to the yeah. east that we didn't want to try to restrict. So we're not showing any plantings around the units and that would probably be addressed in whatever homeowners association language there might be as to what would be allowable. Because we don't want this guy to plant a maple tree in between these two houses and then shield the views to the east for everybody. Or have no access to solar and <coughs> have southern exposure and everything's right except they put a, a maple tree next right. to their house. So it's not that we can't grow all sorts of things in there, they've just got to agree. Did you guys add plantings along the firehouse road? No, those are the same number we had. We okay. had them inside. That's what I thought. In here. Okay. Here and there. <coughs> so making more of a an enclosure around the units. Right. So separating from the road, the firehouse drive, and the parking area. Right. <coughs> so to get to the units that are on the east side, you can pull in you can make that first left yep. right there yep. or you can keep going down mm -hmm. and pulling there and so those are there's a oh the gravel drive okay so can you drive all the way around you can drive all the way around okay so got, it. Got, way got, way. got it got it got it got it okay and there's parking sure. available yep in front of the units as well these are two parking spaces yep, that's right. to okay. days as well okay so there's, about there's that. at least one for every unit that you can park right at your yep. front door yep. And then there's at least one here around the perimeter, and there's there's a, there's more than that. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, we keep thinking about the weekend and 
picnics or barbecues yeah. and where to if everybody's home with their two cars and yeah. you get a family or two mm -hmm. hosts another family or six where they're gonna park. Yeah. So one and two share a pull in right there. And you see between one and two right. Right. they yeah. share that stuff. Yeah. 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 So you have a total of how many on there? That's a good question. I don't know if I ever yeah, I thought it was up to forty two at one point. Yeah. 42 six of my head. Yeah, I'd have to yeah. count around probably. Yeah. Is this the spot? Yep. Twelve, thirteen. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, let's take a second. <laughs> so it needs a total it needs a total of sixteen. Um we did. Actually total units and, and you also had your parking account up on your um, technically six. But if the Livingston property as well could be sure. Yeah. It was on your findings, Chris, in the last one, unless you guys added or changed the parking yeah. spots. Yeah. So we've got 28 intern parking spaces mm -hmm. yeah. in here. And then we also, we also have parking along Firehouse Lane. And I think we're going to. <coughs> and along Firehouse Lane, so that's 38 spaces. 40, 30, 32, 42, anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, 28 internal. All right, and 10 on the firehouse. <clears throat> There's also parking over here, like Chris said, on the Livingston area that's not changing. Be a slight difference between the site plan that you have and this site plan because this basin was decreased in size because of the Slightly. Oh, yeah. The shape is a little different. Yes, yeah. How are you going to decrease it? Well, we haven't finalized the calculations of that one. Okay. And so basically, that's just a grass pond yeah. leaving for water. Exactly. So the pre treatment, <clears throat> anything that um, like road surface, parking area, uh, that rooftops that aren't disconnected from the stormwater system have to go through a pre-treatment basin before they go into an infiltration basin. So that's what this first basin is, is the pre-treatment to get all the nasty materials out of it and then it overflows and goes into the ground in that second basin. So it's about an elevation of each one. How are they different? Or is there actually a culvert in between them? No, it actually overflows. There's a there's an overflow. There's an overflow from between the two. It's right. uh, sometimes it's, I think it's just a ground. So surface. it's just pre-treated by filtering out. Right. It's just a natural. Yeah. Did uh, so the big question we had last time about, and I don't know if I saw it answered on here. And this is to Chris about the under the underlying districts. Yep, it was addressed. Uh, right the, I mean, I know you said you addressed it, but I didn't have the answer. Oh, yep. the an here's the answer. Yep. <laughs> you, if you want to explain it. Oh yeah, sure. After meeting with Adam, um, the it, you do follow whatever the, your underlying use, uses are, whatever the whatever the existing district is. Mm -hmm. So if it's allowed in in chunk A, that that's. You can build that on that piece of dirt. If it's not allowed on that, you can't on that piece of dirt. So, so that means that these buildings, the the big multi-family unit has to be in the in is it, is. And is it? Yes. What before was it partially? Did it get yes. well, it, it, And it also so does not need to move either. No. Excuse me? Even if even if it hangs over by five feet, it's still adequate. Which is what it essentially does. That line right there is the same as this line here. That's the zoning district. Okay. So this eight unit building does hang over by approximately four feet. Okay, and that's okay. And that's okay. okay. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, did you you're allowed up I it's I think it's twenty feet when you're when you're oh, blocks okay. of two unit and two yeah, thirty feet. thirty here. I, 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 I it was twenty to thirty. Somewhere in between the two. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> no okay, thanks. Did your findings change at all, Chris, from your I just added original those calculation? Couple, little, none of my calc I used their calculations, which were the, were basically <coughs> actually I had two point one acres needed in the future and you had two point one one. So oh, you okay. added a <laughs> 
Um, so we were, pretty, we were pretty darn close. Yeah. Yeah. Engineers. <laughs> Has that, where are you with that? The, that doesn't just, change anything for us. No, I mean, in terms of purchasing it. That hasn't happened yet. No. Oh, is that what we're talking about? The, the land transfer hasn't yeah. happened. So we're closing on uh, the Livingston lot. Uh, Nelson Lot, I'm sorry, on Friday, which will be contiguous with this when we build it. But I need Valerie to tell us when the water line's connected before right. we are required to purchase it. Right. But it sounded like that was coming right up in the next month or so. No? I Maybe don't know. Yeah. They've made some more progress uh, working with the um, apartment building, and I think they discussed it Monday night. Um, at the select board meeting. Are there any potential issues that might? It's all about funding and figuring out um, Bristol. The town is actually going to be a co applicant on the loan, and the select board approved that. Um, and then they're working with the, uh, the landowner as far as getting the tie in and how, what, how they can help incentivize that process. They needed a state water permit to construct. Uh, permit from the state to do the improvements they need to do to connect to our water, the town, yes. Bristol's water system. And the, I believe the town was splitting the cost of that application with the uh, Woodland Apartments. Right. And that was what was discussed Monday night in Blue. So it's all moving forward at that kind of a snail space. Uh, all right, yeah. so is there a danger that that, if, I mean, <clears throat> That that doesn't happen. There's Does a, it there's jeopardize a, there's a slight the risk on Kevin's part, but I mean, if you condition your yeah, we would have to like, yes, have permit to be, or approval, right? Okay. Condition it, it's that. required. Yes. Okay. This will be forward. And it's not inconceivable that we could purchase it mm -hmm. ahead of those conditions being met right. with certain conditions, yeah. uh, if it's necessary to accommodate this housing component. Mm -hmm. But it is a so how many units then Chris can we approve without um, without a condition? Actually, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't I we've never really looked at it the math real quick, but I've never looked at it that way. Right. Um, this has been conceptually including the current own, property owned by properties owned by Stony Hill Properties, the properties that they contractually need to buy, mm -hmm. and the other one that will be closed on, which is um, the one to the west of the Nelson property. So that, that's been in play, and that's what we've calculated everything on, and I, I, I haven't changed that, or I haven't looked at <coughs> it. Right I don't know if we would be able to do that. And we wouldn't want to do it in fits and starts. We've right. got to either do it or not. I and agree. at some okay. point there'll be a this calculation and yeah because it just no I, I wouldn't recommend i mean i would just talk about it but so much it would money. make it be a completely different project right it would, cut five, you, it would essentially cut five units off of this yeah. project which doesn't make it affordable or, or profitable to do so i'm going to make all my pitch my landscaping pitch for you <laughs> um i understand the issue of solar, blocking solar and blocking views and that sort of thing. But there's basically, other than trees along the street, and there's the existing, and then you have the hedges, you, you just have grass. These houses are just sitting on grass and with a big stormwater retention, expensive stormwater retention area. Um, not retention, but yeah, filtration. So there's lots of other. I mean, there are other types of plants that you can plant that you know, and and it's not just aesthetic. I'm talking about for stabilizing soil, for slowing down stormwater, and just it's not so much aesthetic. It's also just scale, and I think it's important to have some sort of landscaping that is not without getting in there and doing a whole mm -hmm. detailed plan but maybe some hedges or some small flowering trees it just it feels i mean I like the architecture the layout <coughs> is good 
it feels bleak with no landscaping in between the units. I feel like there's nothing at the middle, you know, not feel, there is nothing at the entrances to kind of give you a little scale. You could have, you know, this is my, you know, it's not, as I said, it's not just aesthetic, it's also stabilizing soil, it's absorbing water, um, and just giving a better product. I mean, yeah, so I think it would be much more appealing. Mm -hmm. I would not want to buy a house with nothing around right. it. So the thing is, you also, whatever one does for someone else who's going to be the future owner is what they're kind of stuck with. It can be minimal, though. I mean, we did that at Core Housing. There were some minimal things mm -hmm. that sort of defined things a little mm -hmm. bit, and then people just, yeah. then there really wasn't. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. Other people can comment on it. You don't have to agree with me, but it's it, it, that is true. But it also is it's the whole concept of kind of slowing down stormwater. So where would you think? The reason well, I'm asking is because we've yet to decide just where the you know you could draw 20 feet around the outside of the building and that's theirs, and you could have a space between it that's every man's land, mm -hmm. and then. So all that has to be defined, right. and it's not defined, and it shouldn't need to be defined, at least in my opinion, at this moment. But in the association agreement, those have to be defined to the inch. Right. And what they can and can't do with it can be discussed among, among the residents so that everyone mm -hmm. gets some say in what the next guy does. What if somebody wants to just put a fence through the thing at 12 feet or whatever there's a zone in right mm -hmm. for how tall, 10 feet well, tall. Well, that's something that you would think. But they, would, they, would, they could do that if we don't specify. Right. Right? So I would, I'm just including all of those things in the conversation that's going to be defined by, the, by this association. I, I worry about my tastes and my choices for aesthetics and other reasons that I know little about, um, and find out that you know they're going to just tear it out because it's not what they want and it's in their front yard. Unless it's required. Unless it's for, permitted. Unless it's what? Unless are, they can't tear out the honey locusts and the oaks because we've permitted Well, that. sure. Right. So if it was something in the drawing that, that was permitted, they, they could not do that. And I, I think and it's a, so it's not, as I'm saying, it's not for looks. It's really for, for environmental creating protection. space and, you know, I mean, I, I, and my feeling is if we did more of that, and, and you know what I'm talking about, we wouldn't have to do as big of a storm water, potentially, a storm water mitigation. No, I mean, this site, unfortunately, it's, it's well, such a small area. I mean, it looks big on this plan, but it, it's, it's, it's a really small and tight area. No, I, I, <clears> I went <throat> over there. But, um, but so, I'm not a landscape architect. I'm not, I'm not well, I'm not going to design this. That's going to be designed by others. So we, we, we're it's just, that's just my pitch, and then, yeah. you know. Well, as, as it is now, what happens to the water that comes off the roofs of the individual buildings? So it does flow over land across grass areas to the basin or through uh, piping. So there's yard piping, uh, yard drains in front of these units. Because <clears throat> it was difficult grading that because you've got so many crosswalks going mm -hmm. down through there. So we have to have actually a yard drain in between each each one of these uh, crosswalks uh, that picks up and pipes it to that. Uh, but not so on the other side. But not not so the other side. It actually, actually will flow that way through a swale. Will it flow, will it flow south or will it flow no, it east flows, down the bank? It's going to be intercepted by a swale. Okay. It's still one oh, got it. Okay. over the bank. Okay, got it. Right. I won't say it. Well, everyone <laughs> no, will the bank under normal yeah. storms. I see. Gonna, so as it stands now, there'll be grass between the units, right? Yep. I mean, you plant grass. Yep. Okay. Yep. And the only the only other mm -hmm. feature out there. I mean, we do show a tree line here. Mm -hmm. That's that's not going to change. It already exists. It already yeah. exists. So you're not seeing any of that. And right. there's a 36 inch oak tree right there that's yeah. going to remain on the project. Yeah. So you don't see that in those elevation views either. But that's obviously that whole bank is wooded. And, and, and they're trying to keep that wall back there too. Alan, point to where it starts to uh, 
elevation starts to go See down. these lines get really thick yes. right there, right? Basically right at the property line, it yeah. starts to drop off really quickly. Right. I mean, it does very quickly. quickly. Yeah. Okay. But that's all gravel underneath. Yeah. So a lot of the rain is going to drain. Right. Yeah, we get um, These are no some basins. feedback regarding we did we designed the infiltration basin for the fire station. Yes. Which is based on the rules. It's, yes. And we get a lot of feedback from several firemen that that basin is never going to get water in it, and and it yeah. might not. Um, it's but, huge. But the purpose of yeah, this the purpose of these designs is so that yeah. this does the infiltration, this does the filtration, mm -hmm. and will build up over time, and then will overflow eventually into that, and that's when you know you need to clean that one out when you start to see. But it is designed for a very large storm. <clears throat> I should have used my green marker before I came. I, I just I do want to. Stress that there is a no. I, I no. We know that. Yep. We know that. Uh, we will be losing some trees, obviously, when the septic goes in, because there is a hedgerow between these guys. Mm -hmm. But that will all be grassed in one area. <clears throat> the adjacent property owners, no, have been alerted. Mm -hmm. Have there been any questions? I talked with them no a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. they're delighted. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Yeah, they're gaining. Like, so the, there's, yeah. there's an access easement right now yes. to this lot based on previous permit. Yes. So they had a driveway potentially going through their parcel to get to the lot that they subdivided years ago. Oh. Now they're going to have a grass lawn area with a septic under it, which will never yeah. get next so, they, so we gave up our right of way, or our, our right of way, um, so that we could we use that now as our setback with this leach field here. Yeah. Now they get. Their drive, they get to drive on it. They, it, it's, we can't come in here now because we've given that up. So they, there's a 25 a, foot setback requirement from the property line for a septic, mm -hmm. and this was a 30 foot wide easement. So mm -hmm. our septic and that coincided very well. So you well. access it from where then after the fact? Well, this lot is actually now part of this project. Yes. Okay. So you come around if you have to get to that. Here to get to yeah. Yes, sir, do you remember when Peter Nelson a few years ago brought in the original right. development? That's where, that's where that right away came yeah. from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Spaghetti. Yeah. I see. Oh, yeah. <coughs> we <laughs> well, it's good to show it there. Yeah, and the rest of the abode neighbors really are the town of Bristol. Um, and, and across the street, one of the abutting neighbors that, yeah, that's potentially going to become town of Bristol property as well. Mm -hmm. so. If indeed the uh, light industry or any business use is able to be developed, it would be beyond, It'd be right beyond, beyond here. here. Yeah. 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 Do you have that up there? Yeah. <laughs> So this is the end. this is the edge of our property right now. Mm -hmm. the, the stormwater basin that we're talking about is just over this property line, but within that parcel. Mm -hmm. And is it your intention, Kevin, to have the uh, walk path begin at the fire lane, the sidewalk and the fire lane? Thanks for asking. We hadn't gotten back to that. Um, it's the easiest way to make it on the side plan, I guess. Mm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hard. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree. <laughs> yeah, so, so the sidewalk now will be coming all the way through the project, and then the um, path, if there is one around the property, could go, you know, could go along the basin yeah, and then the around. And then Come back. Right back. Yeah. It just, I think Katie brought that up. Just, just why muck it up here for the residents? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and by the way, there'd be some, presumably some parking over here, so there's residential things going on here. Mm -hmm. Let's just leave them <coughs> alone. So I don't feel like, and then all of these folks can access it from anywhere on campus and sure. start here. Or, walk out the door. <clears throat> Bill? Hello. 
bill. We're not here for the first part of this hearing three oh, weeks ago. Oh, you weren't here either. Right, we extended the hearing because we had some questions about the site plan and some elements <clears throat> which they've addressed in, in this presentation. But we didn't start from scratch. No, don't want to be scratching. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like a good plan to me. The, uh, the gravel soil will absorb most of the rainfall, <clears throat> but it's good to have the extra basins just in case. I'm gonna go. You're just a thumbs up guy. I'm gonna go. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Would anybody like to make a motion? Or you're not ready. I want to make sure we include the conditions. Conditions. Right. Well, that would yes. Be in the motion. Yes. Let's talk about. Can we talk about it for a minute mm -hmm. before we make a, a motion? Because mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's worded correctly mm -hmm. and concisely. <clears throat> If we have a question, we'll come back. Sure. All right. Okay. So what are um, the first condition would be, or contingent, condition would be, it's a condition, um, on the, the land acquisition, or the, in order to achieve the correct density mm -hmm. for the PUD. And we should probably say the 2.1 acres, or 2.11 acres, yes. and we should probably list the parcels as well. So it's just one parcel additional. Two, two, two. Do you have you seen this? Okay. 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 Well, thank you. Should we reference the parcels? How about the total acres? So to, why don't we just reference the total acres? It's 2.11. Maybe we don't need to list the parcel. Or the total acres required. 2.11. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Right? But additional. Additional. That's additional. We want the total. It's 11.78. So your condition would, my recommendation would be, yep. that, the condition would be that they need to acquire. Right. Um, 2.11 um, contiguous acres, a minimum of 2.11. In the, in the, um, um, is it zoning district? No, I want to say the village mix. Is it? Yes. Village yeah. mix. Is it contiguous? It, it will be. It, it, does it, it have to be? be? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. it, th this project, yeah, it needs to be contiguous. All right, I'm going to practice yeah, before I do it. So, so it, now, That's was there anything else? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah, good. I just want to be careful. We have everything. Right. Was there anything else? That oh, right, in the land. Yeah. Is there anything other than the land? So, so what you can do is instead of including your actual, all the conditions in your verbiage of your motion, mm -hmm. is you create your, your conditions list. You all vote that those are the conditions you want to apply. Then your motion is that you approve the site with the approved mo with the approved conditions. Okay. That, that way you it, have to say out you have to say out loud what the conditions are. We have to use yeah. When, yes. Yeah. Okay. With the following conditions. <clears throat> we, but that's not the motion. You don't have to include that in the motion. Okay. I, I, you can list out what in approve as a group. You can agree that these are the six things. These are the six conditions we want to apply mm -hmm. as a group. You can vote on say yep. These are the six we're going to. Then your motion is. Approve the site plan okay. as presented with the with the six previously approved conditions. Right. So we have one condition right now. At this point, yes. I, I'm just picking an arbitrary. Yes. Six okay. is an arbitrary number. Okay. Do, do we also need to list all the other appropriate application permits? Yes. Do we have to? Sorry, this is. We haven't done one this big in a while. Uh, it's stormwater. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have that yet. No. 
Is it? How do you reference the stormwater permit? Is it the? It'll be a state. It'll be a state assigned yeah. number. I mean, would you call it a state of Vermont stormwater permit? I mean, is that the correct? Yep. Stormwater permit. Same with the wastewater. Do we need to? That's three. And do we need to uh, reference Act 250? <coughs> I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there also a water supply permit required? It's the same. Say so yes. with the wastewater. It's, it's a, actually the title of the permit is a potable water supply and wastewater disposal permit. What yeah. is it? Potable water supply yeah. and wastewater disposal permit. Okay, that helps. Make sure it's official. Okay. Is the stormwater permit just stormwater? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have three. That's what we have. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they came back with the design of structures, the lighting plan, the screening, mm -hmm. landscape. Mm -hmm. And the uh, calculation of the density. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So should we start, would it be right to start with a motion agreeing on the conditions and then do a a motion. We can just agree on the conditions. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need a motion. To do okay. That. Is there anything else we want to have as a condition? I don't have anything. If they do build a fence between the units, who's going to pay for it? Mexico? <laughs> no. <Yeah>. Canada. <laughs> Canada. It's the most serious I've seen here in a long time. <clears throat> well, they're going to have an association, right? And so it's going to be up to them. Yes, I was just pulling your leg. You were. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Oh, okay. I thought you were making a political comment. Oh, I was doing that too. <laughs> can't pass up a good opportunity. That's a given. Um. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, I think we should okay. go ahead. Go for it. Um, I move that we approve the application with materials presented fully this evening uh, with three conditions. And should I list those conditions? The conditions being uh, acquisition of 2.11 additional acres, uh, continuous. Uh, contiguous acres within the village mix zoning district in order to achieve the correct density calculation. The second being uh, acquisition of the State of Vermont stormwater permit and the third being the State of Vermont potable water supply and wastewater permit. Do we want to actually call out the name of the project and application number? Do we need to do that? I don't know. I just stated my right. my my motion. Do you have something? We have not been seconded yet, so I think we can continue. Uh, I was just going to say I think we should just mention keep that motion is great, and just say the Stony Hill properties okay. application. I will. Re I'll say it again before anybody seconds it. And okay. We can be less official. Alan, do you have something to say? Well, I should wait for a second. I guess. It. Okay. Okay, okay. Do you want to read it again or no? Okay. I'll go again. <laughs> so, so if, you're, for your, if you want, it's permit number uh, 18. Yeah, right. Okay, good. <coughs> okay. I did such a beautiful job. <laughs> I know. So I move to approve zoning permit application number 18 900 by Stony Hill Properties uh, requesting a planned unit development. Um, with three conditions. Should I say them again? Those being uh, acquisition of uh, adjacent continu contiguous land equaling 2.11 acres within the village mix zoning district in order to achieve the correct density calculation. Second, 
uh, to achieve to acquire a stormwater state of Vermont stormwater permit, and the third to acquire a state of Vermont potable water supply and wastewater permit. Like second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 You got a discussion oh, first. Discussion. <laughs> you twitch. <laughs> we have a second. Okay. Okay. You wanted to say something. Well, if I could. The motion's on the table. Okay. Yeah, um, sounds great. I'm just, my only concern is that this one acre parcel is not clearly in, in Kevin's hands yet either. Right. So, right. so I think in case, I'm just trying oh, to get all that. If that deal falls through, then he'd have to take 3.11 from this parcel in order to make up the proper density. So I, I don't want to tie it to really either one, but the total. So, so right, so we don't, maybe we don't say the 2.11, right. we just say the total. Total, and, and the other, other comment is I, I strike the word adjacent from the motion. Contiguous, uh, I think is appropriate, but Contiguous. adjacent. Did I say adjacent in the, in the first both. second? You said both, so I just wanted to. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to amend. Can I can I uh, make a motion to amend my sure motion? You may. I second that motion. <laughs> so and then you have to say all in favor of amending the motion. All in right? favor of amending the motion. Well, you give us an amendment first. Oh, all right. So my amendment would be to strike the uh, exact uh, reference to two point one one. Um, and adjacent acreage in order to achieve the correct density calculation. Do you have the total number of acres on there? The total number of acreage that we need. 11.78. In the motion. So should I reference that? Yeah. We need to have the total. Number. All right, say it again. 11. Well, well it's over two. So two different zones. Here's where it's going to get. Yeah. It's going to it's going to be spread out over two zones. So right. where. You, your statement of where it needs to be adequate acreage to meet the density requirements for the project. Uh, for the project. Yeah, I guess uh, it period. Yeah. So I don't need to reference the village mix. Okay. And it, okay, so that's good. We just enough acreage so that we can get the correct density and that the land is contiguous. Those are the two okay. key pieces. Okay, Chris, I forget what I said okay. exactly. So, okay. I'm actually pulling yes, it off no. video. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm pulling. I make notes and then I pull it off video. Okay. Is how I do it. All right. Um, I could reset it. Well, and just make a new one. You, your amendment can be again where you strike out your actual acreage. Right. I'm striking out the acquisition of 2.11 acres. So yes. I'm, I'm saying acquisition of. No. Uh, the. the it is. I think we do have to say that. He needs to acquire appropriate additional acreage to meet the density requirements. So it's not acquisition of that. He, he needs to buy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah no, I'm saying, but was, uh, yeah, acquisition yes. Of, of. Yes. Okay. We, we were going on the same road. Just yeah. So my motion uh, is to approve with the following conditions. The one is uh, the uh, appropriate. Uh, uh, so acquisition. acquisition of the appropriate amount acreage. of acreage in order for the for the uh, in order to achieve the correct density calculation. Contiguous, contiguous, contiguous. Uh, acquisition of correct number of contiguous acres. Acre. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that's that's it. That's the that's the amendment. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now do we have to make a motion? That was my motion. Okay, I'm second. Second. So now somebody has to second it. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion. <laughs> I keep saying yeah. the motion. Yeah. As amended. So as amended. Emotional. As amended. Say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. The amended motion. Okay. Passes. Phew. Thank you. Great motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great project. Okay. Yay. I move to adjourn. Wish you luck. Second.